Hello everybody, it's Demon here. Thank you so much for tuning in to the DemonCast YouTube channel. This is Clash of Dragons Session Diary 2. Um, so in the number one, oh, the first one it was A, really long, B, I never actually described any of the characters. Um, Kisugu is our, one of our fighters. Um, Two weapon fighter uses Watasashi's. She is a Kitsune. Um, Sieg is our ranger. He's kind of the urban ranger. Um, he's the only one that's technically from Ironhold, and he is this purple scaly freak. Um, he kind of went crazy with the like the traits that you can have in the very beginning, and uh, he didn't remember any of them. But he's like, oh, you need to look through all these, these are awesome, and I don't remember a single one of them. Um, Druvent, Druvent's our other fired, and he's this shield. He's basically massively armored and a big shield, and he does hit stuff on occasion. Hmm. Um, see, see who see Druvent. I guess that's it. Um, we have Azula, who died in the last one, and got resurrected. And that's where we pick up in um, session two, I guess. Um, Azula had just been resurrected. Now these guys had just went and killed Sterilax. And so, you know, they help Azula up, they're talking a bit. Azula grabs a hold of uh, Kisuko and says something along the way, you guys still have a head of Sterilax. It's like, uh, yes, here, here it is. He hands over the bag, and they're like, wait, because Kisuku had, has no problem eating anything. So she had chopped up the dragon Sterilex into a bag, and she's like, wait, and she pulls out the other bag, and I'm like, nope, nope, this one's the head, this one's the meat. <laughs> like, okay. So then they go to the Great Ziggurat, because the Great Ziggurat is the palace of Akaresh in Kadurak Ironhold. And um, they gotta go up this huge flight of stairs. It's basically a pyramid. Um, it's got it's it's really more of like a Mayan temple style pyramid than the actual ziggurat. But I like the I like the word ziggurat. Ziggurat Akrash. It fits. So they climb up these steps, and um, they have Fig with them now. Fig's this little. 10 year old girl they picked up on the way back to Keldravak whose family was eaten by wyverns and she's one of those random NPCs who screamed when they saw Sieg and they just latched onto her like okay you're adopted now <laughs> like okay um so they had to carry her because oh my god these steps and then uh, Azula's been dead for like three weeks, so, um, she can't make it. And they get to the steps, most of them uh, up to the top of this thing, most of them exhausted, most of them carrying somebody else. Um, and they go present the head to the Praetor, who is like the governor of the country of Ironhold, over the king of Ironhold. This is a Empire Flame person. And they're like, oh, Yes, very good, but um, we decided it's not worth anything, so there's no price on its head. So then comes the long slump down the Great Ziggurat. They just climbed up. It's like, it's like walking up to the top of a pyramid, realizing there was no point of going there, and having to go all the way back down. So they were sad. Um, another thing that happened in this uh, this session session is um, the Empire of Flame had been working on an iron ship. All right, so there's this great big crowd around as um, these idiots are launching a boat made of metal. It's just gonna sink, and there's bets and stuff taken out. And the players have a, a kind of a long discussion, or the player characters have a long discussion between each other on whether or not this boat's going to sink or float, and how 
dumb or smart it is to make one out of metal. Uh, boat floats. People are like, oh my god. Other people are like, yay, I won a bunch of money. Um, I think Kisuke put a bet in and got back more money than she put in. Other things of note. Um, so what we're doing right now is... Druven is going to be leaving. He's not going to be completely gone, but Ben's going to end up playing a bard character. Uh, Azula is no longer going out with these people. Like, she's not going to die again. So what we're doing is we're setting up a team two, and Druven's going to go head team two. While um, the rest of these guys are going to, you know, continue on doing what they do. And team two is going to be mostly wyvern killing, because wyverns are a big problem since they're now everywhere. Um, I believe that was mentioned in the first one. Um, but he hasn't had his bard character set up yet, so they're, they're doing interviews for certain people. And uh, one of the interviews they're doing is for a party manager, because Azula is now going into like company manager, she needs a party manager. And we've got these elven people. Um, they do a few interviews, and they're sitting in on this one, it's this elven lady comes in, and she's, you know, you can't see her eyes, she's kind of cloaked and whatnot. Um, a little bit of that mysterious, but the best candidate thus far, so you know what, you're hired! Um, what got Kisuku was, she can cook, and she thinks the fox is cute. It's like, yes, that's the right one. This elven person is a little strange to them. And they're supposed to be these... Oh, I forgot to mention that in the last one. Shit, the Ming. Anyway, um, these elven people that showed up in um, World's End also, and they latched onto them, and I completely missed that in the game session thing. They're from the first world. They're Eldrin, basically, and um, they're kind of here just scoping things out. Um, but they do weird magics, like they, they don't necessarily, they do cast spells, but they do a lot of, everything's done in ritual. You want to cook a meal, you make a magical ritual to convert raw ingredients into food. Um, you don't actually cook it yourself, why would you do that? There's magic. Yeah. Um, so they go out there. They have to go kill a great big wyvern, um, which was funny. She sets up camp by drawing this great big circle and poof, everything's there. Like, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, so far, so good. They go find their great big wyvern. They're in battle. Holy shit, this is a really big wyvern. And Sieg's like, ah, I crit. He fires a musket that's had Dragon's Bane. He... He wouldn't have one shot killed it, but it was already down to like two-thirds of its health. And that killed it. And I'm like, well, fuck. Describe how this thing, I don't know, explodes when you shoot it with this one freaking bullet. And uh, that was fun. Now... They get back, and they see Akarash. Akarash is the Red Emperor. He is the ruler of the Empire of Flame, and as such, the Empire itself. And he is this great big red dragon. And when they see him, like, Sieg just looks up and he freezes. Just stops moving. And, and Sieg's always been this crazy person. So I'm like, um... How do the other people feel about the fact that Sieg is just staring in the air? And Kisuku's like, I stare at Sieg, wonder if he's actually looking at something or if he's just being Sieg. <laughs> um, eventually they realize, hey, there's a big red dragon. That's Akarash. Um, it takes a while for it to click for Kisuku, and then she goes and runs and tells um, Azula, who is the child of Akarash. 
Um, they get to meet Akaresh. You know, they wake up one day, Azula's super excited, she's getting dressed in, like, tight, form-fitting, but completely covering clothes, which is pretty much everything she hates. Um, she's excited, she's yelling at Druvent to polish his armor and see to be less of, a, less of a scaly freak, and he's like, I can't, and Kisigu to go get dressed or something. And they all march their way up the ziggurat, which takes forever. And they get there, and they get to meet Akaresh. Akaresh is this in human form. I mean, polymorphed human form. He's this mountain of a man that looks kind of draconic. I'm being pinched. Okay, I'm back. Where was I? Oh yeah, they went to go see Agarash. So, huge mountain of a man, sitting up on a big throne, speaks with this extremely loud, booming voice, because he can't help it. Um, so Azula's just, like, on the ground in your Seiza-style Japanese kind of bow. This is her her master, her lord, and her, her emperor, and actually her father as well. Um, just super excited to see him. And, um, instead of, like, congratulations on defeating Sterilex, it's like, you're the ones that defeat Sterilex, right? They're like, yeah! And he's like, and what of the wyverns? And the party's like, oh, fuck. Because technically it's their fault, but Zulu's like, don't tell anybody! Um... And Sieg opens his big fucking mouth. Now he hasn't like said, yeah, that, that's our fault. He's like, oh yeah, we saw them. And Driven's like, Sieg. And Kisuku's like, Sieg. And Asula's like, oh my god. <laughs> um, I start questioning him about the wyverns, uh, the giant wyverns. It's like, ah, we saw that too. It came out of the mountain. And they're just like, oh my god, Sieg, you need to shut up or we're all gonna die. <laughs> Um, he doesn't say anything that incriminates them, but like, yeah, we were there and we saw it. Um, <laughs> I can rush cast Detect Thoughts, and everybody fails their saving throw except for Sieg. Um, fortunately, before I thought to cast for Detect Thoughts, perhaps, fortunately, um, Druvent is of the Dwarven peoples who built this palace for Akrash. Akrash says, you know, thank you for that, I quite enjoy it. As, you know, he's casting his spell. Um, so Druvent's surface thoughts are basically, of course it's awesome, we're dwarves! Um, Stig passed his thing. Azula's over there thinking, like, oh my god, my daddy's mad at me. <laughs> this is all my fault. Just kind of crying to herself, so not incriminating. And Kisuku's like, we're gonna die. He's gonna kill us. Oh my god, we're gonna die. He's too powerful. He's gonna kill us. So they ain't even thinking anything incriminating. Um, Agdress basically says, get out of my sight. Very meanly. Like, he doesn't blame them, but it might be their fault, and I don't like that. Which pretty much crushes Azula, as far as what was left of the hope of forever, like, going back home and stuff. So they leave quickly. Uh, Akarush is a scary guy. And Azula's just slumped over walking down these steps. And the rest of them are like, we're not dead. See, you're an idiot. And um, they notice a guy coming up the steps. They get about halfway down. He's about equal with them. Um, they realize that he's like a wizardy type and he's levitating up the steps. And they're like, ah! Oh, that asshole! 
that's the way to do this. And Azula's just going like, oh, there's a person. They get towards the bottom of the steps when the explosions start going on. This is the big bad. They just walked past the big bad. And the big bad is now trying to kill Akadresh. Um, the Red Emperor, Azula's father, basically the quote-unquote good dragon in Clash of Dragons. Azula sees this and starts booking it back up. Um, Druvin's like, you go! They have to keep their weapons at the bottom. You're not allowed to take your weapons into the palace. That's, that seems pretty reasonable. So they're like, Druvin's like, go get our weapons, I'll chase after Azula. And he's trying to run up and he, he's got a lower run speed. So he's like, well, made up at the top of our vehicle, right? Um, Kisuku and Sig go get the weapons. Everybody down there is sleeping. All the guards are knocked out sleeping. And they're waking him up like, what are you doing? And it's like, what, what the hell are you doing? And there's a loud explosion coming out from there. Like, oh shit. Um, so as they're running up the ziggurat, Akaresh comes out, human form. Um, runs out of his thing, leaps off the thing. Looks like he's going to go die somewhere. But bursts into his dragon form and takes flight. Um, weird magic stuffs. Uh, these circular kind of room things appear and out of them comes like crystalline butterfly type things and starts shooting lightning bolts at Akarash and now there's this giant aerial battle. Um, Azula keeps running up into the keep. These guys eventually catch up with Druvent at the front of the keep. The wizard guys in there, they see Azula cast a fireball or a scorching or something at him. It deflects off some uh, shimmering shield-like thing, and he casts a spell with that kind of glyphy thing that circles around, does other things, and this invisible wave just hits Azula and she just crumples in. And I was expecting some type of reaction. And they were like, wait, she crumpled or like crunched or something like that like don't get crumpled in like you get hit by a massive force and you just kind of crumple to the ground and they're like oh okay and you know the wizard leaves by some type of fly spell or something to go continue fighting Akarash I'm like you, you, you guys don't want to check on Azula like and apparently I didn't make it sound bad enough um, originally the point, she was supposed to be outside when she crumpled onto the stairs. But, um, I guess they had pretty much assumed, A, I would not kill Azula on the sec this next session, and B, I wouldn't kill her in such an asshole move that they had no way of preventing it. And they were right. I mean, she just has a bloody nose or something. Um... And, and she's, she's sitting there, she's bleeding, and they actually do go talk to her, online, and she's like, Find Praetor. And she's got the accent, Find Praetor. Fire, pray what? So they go through this, like, charade game of trying to figure out what the hell she's saying. It's Find Praetor. And Druven's like, Druven didn't play that. He's just like, okay, I'm going to go find whatever she wants. He obviously got find out of that. Um, and it's like, find... What's a praetor? And I'm like, Druvent, you find that uh, that lady that you always come to see. She's uh, pretty badly hurt. It's the praetor, the person who controls Iron Old, basically. <laughs> like, oh, I found her. <laughs> um... And the fun begins. So, up on like the front porch of the ziggurat, the landing area where um, Akaresh comes in, airships and stuff come in, you can see like a massive swath of the city. And over to their left, which is the North Gate District, is this giant freaking elemental thing. Now in the 
it took me a while to find it in the beast because it's um it's a kami it's it's not a it's not an elemental or i thought it was a colossus it's uh it's a kami some type of kami i think it's from beast Re 3 or something but it looks like this giant earth elemental thing and this thing just comes bashing through and it's starting to think it's making its way towards the palace that's a problem and they're like hmm Maybe we should leave. <laughs> like, but you're not gonna go save people from the giant elemental? <laughs> like, and Kisugu's like, one round. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna hit it for one round, and if I don't do any damage, I'm running. Yeah, so they start going out all the way down the ziggurat again. <laughs> going down is easier than going up, obviously. So they get to this thing, and I basically give a description. This is kind of a Shadow of the Colossus type thing. I'm sad I never actually got to play that game, but this is basically what it is. I knew enough about Shadow of the Colossus to do this. It's a skills challenge. And um, Druvink gets to go first due to his high initiative roll. And they're like, well, that's funny. And it's like, yeah, I run towards it. And um, obviously, as this is Shadow of the Colossus reference type thing, Sieg's like, oh, yeah, all you. I think. Let's see. It might have been the Kisugu. It's like, oh, yeah, all you need is your, your horse now to ride on as you go towards this thing. It's like, I don't need a horse. I got Don Quixote. <laughs> Um, Don Quixote takes way back there. I'm like, yes, Don Quixote pops out of nowhere, swoops you up, and you are now riding towards this thing on Don Quixote. And see, well, not see, but um, Killbot, who plays Sieg, is just laughing his ass off. This is seriously happening. I'm like, yeah, as, as Druvan's raising his axe in the air, it shines a light that points directly towards the thing. <laughs> And I wasn't sure if he was unhappy about this, because he thought it was really silly, and my games are a little more serious than his, but I'm like, we can have some fun here, it's fine. <laughs> um, so Druvit makes an attack roll, which generally in a skills challenge don't allow, but it's roughly the same bonus. So, yeah, he attacks, and it's not high enough, and it just goes ding, and now he's running past this giant elemental, um, having done nothing to it, and just like, oh. Crap. So, um, what happens? Uh, if, as far as I can remember, um, Kisuku uses acrobatics to run up on some buildings and jump and grab hold of this thing as it's smashing its way through. Um, C uses perception to figure out where its weak spot is. And I'm like, okay, it's got this, like, where an eye would be, it's got a large crystalline gem thing. And um, because Azula's here, I let her do that too. And um, she gives a bluff. I'm like, how do we do this? Like, I don't know. Um, they give me some ideas. I'm like, okay, she tells all the people to put a bunch of cards in its way so they'll trip and fall over and can't go anywhere. Like, well, that seems more like a diplomacy. I'm like, this isn't gonna work. It's a bluff. <laughs> Might slow it down a bit. Um, so they do that, and it's, uh, I think it's back up to Druvent, um, who intimidates the people to get out of the freaking way before they die. Um, I don't remember the exact words, whatnot, but I think he succeeded, and they start running off. Um, C makes an attack roll to basically point out where the weak spot is. Like, the weak spot's here! Bang! Um, hit the thing. Kisuku, I believe, used... I don't remember. I don't remember what Kisuku did. Damn it. I think it might have been a failure. Like, she tried to move up to a certain spot, but couldn't. Do not remember. Um, 
Azula fail to use magic device. The DC for this was 20. Her use magic device is 15. She only had a rule 5. She rolled a 3. Um, so yeah, she tries to start stuff on fire with her wand and um, no. Did nothing. Like, hits a barrel of water. Well, that was the opposite effect. Um, Druvent runs into a shop. Is there any flammable liquids in here? I'm like, yes. And then, um, as Kisiku's again, he, Kisiku's turn again, she can reuse acrobatics at this point. And I use acrobatics to go around the thing. And this is the last success. So I'm like, okay. You guys succeed your skill challenge. Let's go down the line. Um, Druvent, what are you doing? It's like, I... I want to throw the barrel of lamp oil at the thing's feet. I'm like, okay, you do that. He's like, I don't have to roll. No, you've already completed the skills challenge. You don't have to roll. So he does that. And Azula lights it on fire. So now this thing's feet are on fire. And um, I'm like, Sieg, what do you do? He's like, well, I, I don't know. Can I... I don't know if it was his idea or somebody else's idea. It's, you stick like a, a spike in his gun and shoot a gun so that his spike lands into the, um, sticks itself into the elemental thing, giving Kisuku something to stand on or something. Like, sure, there's a big spike over there, you can shove it down your muzzle loader. Because it's a muzzle loader, I mean, it shoots out anything that you put in it. Then he fires the spike off and it lands there, and just as Kisuku's starting to slip, this little peg goes in, and you're like, perfect. Kisiku drops down on that, puts full body weight into slamming her um, sword through its gem thing. Gem shatters. I'm like, okay, you're there. This thing stops moving. And now it's starting to fall forward. Kisuku's on this thing's face. I'm like, oh, and he's like, oh, fuck, this is what's supposed to happen. I'm like, I'm, you're fine. Just roll me a reflex save. He's like, oh crap. Um, he aces his reflex save. And the whole idea of the reflex save was either A, you land really cool, or B, you land in a pile of broken shit and that kind of hurt. Um, so he ran really cool. And they were like, pump. That was, it was an awesome encounter. Uh, it worked out really well. These videos always go really long. I just like talking about my game and nobody else listens to me. Except for the players and whatnot. I think that's pretty much where we cut it, if I remember correctly. Um, I do believe that I'm going to be making them quite famous at this point. Like, hey, those are the guys that took down that giant elemental thing. Um, the wizard disappeared, so Akirash is circling the city, trying to find out the, find the thing that tried to kill him. Um, we're going to make the players famous and they're going to have to now deal with stuff like Can I have your autograph? That kind of thing. That should be fun. I'm an out.